everybody this is it chooses you and these are the stories that have chosen you today i'm Teresa sparks and that is claire Patton, and this is our smidgen edition we always talk about things we like in the smidgen edition we talk about it more briefly consider it the edited version of our take on something mm-hmm, that's right if we only have four sentences it's a smidgen if we have 10 we turn it into a whole episode I have been watching, and I don't know how I discovered this, because I know you don't like horror movies, and I don't like horror movies either. And yet, I've discovered a channel on YouTube (laughs) that posts beautiful, short, they're all short films, so 20 minutes or so, psychological horror movies. Mm. Like, no gore, no jump scare, Or very little gore. Jump scare is not the most important part. It's mostly like, what the fuck is happening here? It's basically a bunch of different filmmakers and casts and things. And the question is always, what the fuck is going on? Mm. (laughs) So I feel like I'm drawn to things lately where asking the question, what the fuck is happening here, is the first thing that needs to happen. So I found this this YouTube channel, Alter, A-L-T-E-R. That's the channel name. And it's a, a bunch of directors and cast and things, like I said, different stories. But all of them are, they're beautiful. Mm. And most of them are really, really good and interesting. And they approach all kinds of different issues, all kinds of different horrifying issues from all kinds of different perspectives. And I went down a rabbit hole one night lying in bed and I watched short horror movies for four hours. I mean, I think I watched everything they've ever posted. Wow. And I keep going back to the ones that freak me out the most. And I don't don't know why. So I've been doing that for a little bit. uh, And that night happened a few weeks ago. And then I found another channel on YouTube that did this guy. um, It basically does video essays, which are very good. And he did one on the movie Midsommar that Ari Aster, you know, everybody dressed in white. And there's the girl who's smiling and crying with flowers all around her on the cover. Ari Aster is he's the guy who directed Hereditary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I saw a thing on that movie, not by this particular essayist, by someone else, that made me want to watch Hereditary. And Hereditary is way... It looks so scary. I've heard it's, it's really terrifying. It's so scary, Claire. I, I, I do the thing where I skip around. <laughs> like, I can't just sit and watch it. I have to take control of my yeah. viewing experience or I get too anxious. And I skipped a bunch of things because I was like, I just, uh, no, 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 no. That level of tension. So anyway, I watched this video essay about Midsummer that lo- looked at all of these different things. And I was like, do I have to watch this movie now? I think I think I might have to watch this movie now because <laughs> mm-hmm. I know what happens, and that's always that's always my anxiety. Is I need you know if I know how it ends, I'm okay watching it. Yeah, I'm just unwilling to be taken on that story. Really, I'm unwilling to be led down that story. So in Midsummer, William Jackson Harper, who played Cheaty in The Good Place, he's in it. Oh, I love him. He's so great. And he's really good in this. It's a completely different character, obviously, but he's very, very good in it. And a bunch of people who are also good actors. And it's beautiful and it's very simple. I mean, it's it's a gorgeous, gorgeous movie visually. If it wasn't about horrifying things, it would be... It's like a painting. It's beautiful. And that's one of the things I like about Ari Aster is he really like... He's a really good filmmaker. He just happens to work in horror somehow. <laughs> yeah. So... I watched Midsommar, which is horrible and terrifying. Just, just, I mean, don't watch it, but it's so good. It's so good because it's the same question. What the fuck is going on here? What is going on here? If you're into horror at all on this beautiful spring, (laughs) spring afternoon, interested in watching something that terrifies you, I've got what you need. And it's that. (laughs) You passed me your burp. I did. You guys, we're recording a few episodes in close proximity here, and Claire has been burping after every single one. We finish recording, and she burps. I just burped. (laughs) She's passed me her burp, but I can't hold it until the end. So if I burp throughout this thing, it's Claire's fault. That's the takeaway. I am nothing if not the model of (laughs) self-discipline. You will stay in. Is that a Catholic thing? Do you think that they... It might be. Yeah. That's a whole other episode. (laughs) So 
Today, Claire, we are going to talk about the Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling and Wake. All right, I don't know what that is. Are you in for a treat? So I'm referencing a movie, nope, a series called We Are the Champions, which is on Netflix. The first episode of that series is about the Cooper's Hill cheese rolling and wait. Where's Cooper's Hill? Well, what a great question. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also referencing a National Geographic documentary from 2018. It's available on YouTube. So, you know, Google some combination of those things and you can find it on YouTube. Okay. Every year since 1826, in the spring, a group of local and international, what do we call them? Thrill seekers? Daredevils? Mad bastards, <laughs> the compelled few, <laughs> they throw themselves down a hill near Brockworth, Gloucestershire, chasing a wheel of double Gloucester cheese that regularly hits speeds of 70 to 80 miles per hour. What? It's the most dangerous foot race in the world. I feel like you've just completely made this up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's why I had to tell you, because when I watched it, I was like, am I dreaming right now? <laughs> Is this actually happening? <laughs> the wheels of cheese weigh eight pounds. They're quite big. They're about a foot, foot wide, foot wide, four or five inches tall. The wheels are given a one second head start. The hill is about 100 yards from top to bottom and is steeper than 45 degrees. Ooh. Yeah, so somewhere out there, somebody's calculating. Thank you. <laughs> Right in with the answers about how likely it is that these people are ever going to catch this cheese. When they fall, and everyone falls, they bounce. Oh my goodness. <laughs> at the end of the race, at the bottom of the hill, the racers become a pile of concussions and broken ankles, ribs, knees, and arms. Okay, wait a second. What's their goal? Are they trying to catch the cheese? No. No. This is the best part of the game. <laughs> the game is not to catch the cheese. The game is to chase the cheese. Just to maintain proximity to your particular wheel of cheese for the entire race. So it's one wheel of cheese per race, not per person. Got it. They kick one wheel of cheese down the hill and everyone waits one second and then dives after it. <laughs> so it's like a, a cheese pile. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The cheese reaches the bottom relatively unscathed. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> it's a wheel and it just kind of rolls down and is like, hey, guys, I'm still delicious. Anybody hungry? <laughs> but the racers come down in a bloody pile at the end. Oh, my God. It's like rugby, but with cheese. That's right. It's rugby, but it's not. It's a competitive sport in that it's a race. It's not a team sport, though. And yeah, I mean, it's just... It's fucking terrifying. It's So is there a winner or does everybody lose? No. <laughs> the winner is give, gifted the cheese. And what, how is the winner determined? Who is first to the bottom of the hill? Honestly, if you thought you could survive it and you could jump out far enough at the top of the hill and just fall to the bottom without even pretending to try and run like everyone does, you would win the cheese. Right. So you win the cheese, but you also win like legendary status among your peers, right? I mean, who wouldn't want that kind of clout? Yeah. I mean, especially it's a small town and, you know, the, the event is getting bigger and bigger. Lots of people know about it now. And so everyone is kind of like, hey, you guys are kind of eroding the hill a little bit. <laughs> like, <Right. laughs> This hill is now just mud and it's, it's bad for the houses at the bottom of it. Like, <laughs> How many heats are there? Yeah. So there are, um, I think, five or six races for dudes and one race per lady for ladies every year. Okay. So <laughs> I just need to say... In case it wasn't clear, people regularly leave the course with broken bones. Like, when you're watching documentaries on this thing, they just film people trying to get up and walk on broken ankles. I mean, it's just the most brutal thing you've ever seen. They're just a mess. Ugh. They're muddy. They're bloody. They're concussed. They're, it's just horrifying at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> people go down in their underwear. They go down in costume. <laughs> it's all ages. All age I mean I mean age of majority is probably required or like late teens or something right but like lots of different fitness levels lots of different sobriety levels <laughs> like, <laughs> it's kind of just a free-for-all oh lord 
In that Netflix series, We Are the Champions, which again, I highly recommend, the organizer of the race talks about the race and how it's a community event and community volunteers keep it going. And we're going to do it every year because it's part of our cultural heritage and all of these things. And then when they interview the city managers, the city managers only talk about how there's no event organizer. (laughs) And I'm like, (laughs) have you not seen this episode, bro? Debbie was just talking about (laughs) how it's all put together every year. Like, what are you talking about? And so I, I was really curious about that. I was like, the city says there's no organizer, but yet they're interviewing a woman and people talking about the woman and about the event. And they're like, no, she organizes it. And I'm like, oh, it's a liability thing. Either that or Debbie was a wheel of cheese all along. (laughs) This is the revenge of the cheese produced in Gloucestershire. Every wheel of cheese hates the fact that it's cheese. It wanted to be milk. It wanted to go into a baby cow. It resents the world. And this is how it's going to take down humanity. Yeah, yeah. It's apocalypse by cheese. (laughs) This woman transformed into a human from a a wheel of cheese. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, that... mm -hmm. If you kiss her on the cheek... It tastes mighty good. Let's just be clear. I'm not sure her name is Debbie. I don't remember her name. She seems like a perfectly nice lady. I did not know her name. She probably also isn't a wheel of cheese. Well, I mean, maybe. I'm fascinated by that, how it's like it happens every year. And if it weren't to happen, I think there would be a lot of very miffed English people. But it's 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 unfortunate, actually. It's unfortunate that I'm the one telling this story. I feel like if you had found this story, you would approach it much less as an event organizer. Um, because, <laughs> and you would like get into some other really interesting parts of the fact that people chase cheese down a hill. But from my perspective, I'm like, well, I mean, all you have to do is get the permits. And if it's private property and like, are you, like if you're going to start advertising about three months in advance or you want to put the date for next year out, like you need to... <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you like you just form an LLC so that if there's anybody hurt and they want to sue you, then they sue the LLC, not you, and it's all fine. Like what's <laughs> I will sue neither Gloucester, Gloucester, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's right, or the wheel of cheese itself for any bodily harm that may be inflicted <laughs> upon me during the course of my descent, descent in pursuit of cheese glory. Glory, Claire. Cheesy glory. That's right. Lacto-fermented power. (laughs) (laughs) I realize that my questions and concerns about this event are slightly boring, administrative, bureaucratic. (laughs) I can't help it. I am who I am. (laughs) I just feel like they really need someone who's willing to take the paperwork on. That's all I'm saying. But in addition to the event management pieces that fascinate me, (laughs) the other thing that I really want to talk about is what the hell these people did to have to make this sacrifice of pain to the earth like this. What happened on this hill that makes it like the spot where people go to, I mean, it's not flagellation, but it's related. I'm going to tumble down this hill now. I mean, it's an act of madness. Uh Uh-huh. But then they're all very cheery about their injuries. Like people are hurt at the bottom, but they're not upset. I mean, it's just, it's fascinating. I was hoping you'd have a hot take. I I think you're right. I think there's probably historically and culturally something went down there, right? Yes. (laughs) Something went down there. Yep. Something happened on Cheese Hill. Promise you that. Cooper's Hill, but it really should be called Cheese Hill. Well, and I was thinking, is it called Cooper's Hill? Because, you know, like, is it a person named Cooper? Or was it like the place where they tested barrel straps or something? Like, what what do I know about craft and industry, pre-industrial Britain? Nothing. How long has this contest been going on? Since 1826. Yeah. So, I mean, clearly it's got some roots in like a deep psychological wound (laughs) of some kind. What delights me is that they're so happy doing it. Yes. You know, and I think it's once again, a testament to, (laughs) there there wasn't a lot going on back in the 1800s in terms of entertainment. So you really had to blaze your own trail, (laughs) so to speak. That's really, because now maybe in order to feel alive, we have to throw ourselves down a hill. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what else are you going to do? We could talk about the couch option and the weed option. We could talk about the mountain climbing option. I mean, I think throwing myself off the hill in pursuit of the perfect cheese is really the only option. I don't even know why you're bringing other things up. (laughs) 
<laughs> of the available options, I agree. This is superior. No question. <laughs> How wonderfully entertaining. Yeah. That people do this and, and we get to hear about it. And can I tell you how beautiful slow-mo video footage of people tumbling down a hill is. It's the most gorgeous thing I've seen in a long time. It's really beautiful. And in my mind, they're all hefty and bearded. No, it's small, thin, young girls. It's hipsters. It's people who have come from a, from abroad just for the, the cheese tumble. I mean, the cheese chase, I guess. <laughs> I'm here for the cheese fall. I'm into this. I just want to know how good is that cheese? Yeah, well, I imagine it's beautiful. I mean, it's made in that area. Area. It, it's a town known for that cheese. It's an area known for that cheese. Part of the ceremony is that they go to the elders of the community and the elders help wrap the cheeses. So it, it looks like masking tape, although I'm sure it's something that's not masking tape, but they just wrap it in masking tape and then put little r- colored ribbons in it and they wrap it up very beautifully. And so like the older people from the town are preparing the ceremonial cheese that's going to be kicked down, not kicked, thrown down a hill. And I think I think the image of older people from the town preparing this thing that's going to cause damage to the younger people of the town is why I started talking about Midsummer at the start of this. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. As I'm talking, I realize those two things do actually have some things in common. In the series on Netflix, there's a very nice little plot about the current women's world record holder for cheese chasing. Her name is Flo Early, and I think she's like 19 years old. She's very young. Early 20s, maybe. I can tell you about her story, which is interesting. <laughs> this girl, woman, uh, Flo Early, she has won. She won two years, and there's only one women's race a year. There are four or five races for men, like I said. And so there's a guy called Chris Anderson who's won the thing 23 times because he can enter four or five times every year. And so he got married, and his and he has a kid now, and his wife is like, "You're not doing the fucking cheese thing anymore." <laughs> <laughs> You're going to break your neck chasing a cheese. You have a son. What's wrong with you? And so Flo, when she was like, I'm going to try and beat the world record, I'm going to try and win my third one, which would be the record. As I'm preparing for this, let me consult Chris, the old master at 28 or whatever, and see if he has any techniques that I might practice or whatever. So there's footage of them and he's basically teaching her how to fall so that it increases her momentum rather than decreases it. <laughs> like you're just, your thing is just to make it more dangerous. <laughs> Like, your strategy for winning is to put yourself in greater jeopardy. And I, I found myself watching it. I'm like, don't listen to him. Oh, oh no, don't do that. Because she's, you know, 5'4 or something. And he's a very tall man and the larger. And she's a very small, relatively delicate structure, although not obviously not delicate in personality or ovaries. <laughs> very powerful, energetic person, right? But as I'm saying, don't listen to him. You're going to get really hurt. Like she understands. She learns what he's trying to teach her. And she starts falling in a, in a way that looks more controlled, that she says feels more controlled. And that is very, very fast. I'm just saying, you know, whatever you're trying to accomplish, whether it's graduate with a master's degree or figure out how to make a living as a storyteller or plant a permaculture food forest in Colorado or chase a cheese down a hill. There's always someone who's better at it than you, than you that you can learn from. <laughs> and you should seek that person out. That's right. That's a good piece of advice. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave you guys with an admonition to go watch We Are the Champions and look for the moment where the slow-mo starts. So we watch Flo's race, her epic like world record attempt race. She was going for her third win. The cameras watch her the whole way down. And there's a certain moment where she's tumbling, but she's not quite getting it. She's tumbling, but she's not getting that momentum. And she's starting to slow down and there are people around her. And then you watch her, as the race is happening, pull away from the pack. Like suddenly she's going three times as fast as anyone around her because she's got it. She's got the momentum. She's got the rhythm. She's doing the thing. It makes me so happy. The filmmakers set the slow-mo to the 1812 overture. Of course they do. (laughs) It completely delighted me, and I wanted to share it with you. And I hope that you and everyone who listens will go watch it right now. Oh, it it sounds mad and wonderful and completely worthwhile. And I mean that in the sincerest way. (laughs) I love this kind of shit. Well, that's it. That's the submission for this week. Thank you so much, Teresa. Thank you for letting me tell you about it. I love it so much. You guys, please like, download, subscribe, do all those things. Downloads are particularly meaningful. Click things for us. We love you. Have a great week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Testing. Great. 
Thank you for listening to It Chooses You. Your hosts are Teresa Sparks and Claire Patton. Our theme song is by Bobby Dart. If you'd like to get in touch with us, drop us an email at itchoosesyoupodcast at gmail.com.